Hey guys, today we're gonna talk about compression. Music compression is the process of reducing a signal's dynamic range. And dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and the quietest parts of an audio signal. You need to reduce the dynamic range to most of audio signals for them to sound natural on a recording. Compressors fix it by attenuating the loudest part of your signal and boosting the result to quieter parts, are more apparent. So if you set up your compressor correctly, it will make your vocals brighter, your drums punchier, and your bass line fatter. That's what compressor does. So when and how to use compressor? I will show you examples of when and how we use compression in most of the cases. First of all, we use compression on the drums to make them fatter and punchier, to add attack to drums, to bring the body to add sustain and glue them together. Second, we use compression on a group of instruments. We use multiband compression to make it smoother and to make them sound more balanced. Third, to use compressors to get different creative effects, to pull out the dirt out of all samples to put it on the reverb tail or just to use different compressors characteristic to get certain color on certain sounds. Now we'll try to improve the sound of drums using compressor. We'll start with a kick drum and we will use parallel compression. It's about parallel compression. Parallel compression is when we split a signal into two, compress one really hard and then mix it with a dry signal using either two chains or dry wet knob in compressor. Okay, I'm quite happy with the kick drum, now let's move on to the snare. As you can see on Smehascope, we added attack to the snare and now after compression it sounds sharper and a bit punchier. Now let's move on to heads. Let's cut uh, low frequencies and unnecessary highs.
And now let's compare the whole loop before and after compression. As you can hear, drums started sounding more punchier, fatter, and more expressive. Um, and now let's try to use compressor on the whole loop. Now let's check before and after. Moving further, um, bass group. So we have a small group of different basses here. Let's listen to them. So here is our little example and it definitely needs to be compressed. Um, we're gonna use few compressors. Uh, pay attention to the smehascope, how it's gonna change. This compressor called Melda Turbo Compressor, it can uh, pretend to be like almost every legendary compressor together with features like saturation and like all other advanced things. That's a cool effect, need to remember this, but, well, it's like overdoing things. Now, next try another one, so it's gonna be Fafilter Pro C2. Let's check before and after. We can use a bit of parallel compression with the same principle as with the drums. Yeah, it works nicely. Now let's try a multiband compressor. It's Ozone Dynamics from Ozone 9.
So out of all three, I prefer multiband compression on this bass group. Next example of using compression. In this example, I'm gonna use CLA3A from Waves. It is emulating the compressor from 70s. So we made the piano sounding brighter and smoother, and we also add specific attack, uh, as you can see on Smehascope. It will let us to have it more readable and audible in the mix. Let's check another example of using compression. So we have Reese bass, and now uh, look at the Smehascope. <laughs> As you can see on Smehascope, the waveform is not really balanced. Um, the part of waveform is quieter, another one is louder, so we need to fix it using compression. And for this one, we're gonna use CLA2A from Waves. <laughs> So CLA2A does a good job, and now let's try the OTT compressor. <laughs> So OTT brought too much dirt out of the sound and it doesn't fit us in this example. Let's use another one. It's 1176 uh, emulation from Pulsar. <laughs> So 1176 does a great job and it sounds really cool. Let's try multiband sound good either. <laughs> Sound good either sound not good uh, because of phase issues on the splits of multiband zones. Now we're gonna try our own preset for Patcher. Uh, it's multiband compressor made by ourselves. It's splitting sound into three bands, high, mid and sub, and using Pro C on each of the bands to compress them. So the sound of compressor of our own production, in my opinion, is better than other examples we use today. But be careful because uh, it's quite CPU hungry and will consume a lot of it because we have a lot of plugins and all of them are in linear mode. As I said earlier, compressor can be used to get certain creative effects like pulling out uh, reverb tails or bringing noise out of old vinyl records or any other samples. Now we're gonna try compression on the loop made of different old samples.
we have a limiter in the end of the chain, um, just in case. So we are setting up depths to maximum, input gain to maximum, time on minimum, and then output gain uh, we will set up based on what we hear. In my opinion, it's just pure fire. Uh, for the similar purpose, we can use Pulsar's 1176. It's actually free download. we get really interesting sound here. For the similar purpose, we can use Sound Goodizer from uh, FL Studio. So for this small loop, I've put a uh, few Sound Goodizers, 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 <laughs> uh, in different positions. And then I have Thus, which got the high harshness. And in the end of the chain, we have a limiter. So let's check how it sounds without processing. Nothing special. And now let's put compression on. Heavy. So let's put a kick drum here. So feel free to be creative with compression, that's all for today and hope you liked the video.